So we're going to start off with a curveball. My name is Paul Bartolotta. Um, and uh, these are the interesting dynamics of where we are when my brother and I were filming one of our onboarding videos. Um, you know, our marketing team had this script that we were supposed to read, and my brother and I are ad-libbers, so that didn't work very well. And so when we introduced ourselves on this video, my brother said, hi, I'm Joe Bartolotta. And I'm like, and I'm Paul Bartolotta. And we can't even get our name straight. Um, and the genesis of this was part and parcel to our story um, as brothers, uh, first and foremost, and then how we founded our company. Um, so um, at a very early age, I was 14, I started in the restaurant business and I, and as a, as a dishwasher making money so I could take girls out. Um, and, then, and, then, um, and then I had an opportunity to go visit my sister Maria, who's here today, who's working at the Rainbow Room in New York, and I introduced, she introduced me to a gentleman who ultimately opened the doors for me to go to follow my passion as a chef to go work in Italy. So I'm over in Italy, and I show up, and it's the first day, and I walk up to the chef, and I said, hi, I'm Paul Bartolotta. And he looks at me, and he's like, okay. And so he said, write this down. So I wrote down my name, oh, Bartolotta. So from, I don't know, 1979, 1980, my name has always been Paul Bartolotta. And I had to remember that uh, because when I was in Italy and in France cooking in many restaurants over this eight-year journey, and then I came back to New York, I brought many of my chefs with me. So in the restaurant, we're all speaking Italian, and so it's Bartolotta. So I love the Cipet. The Cipettas love that. We have to connect. Um, and then <laughs> I look forward to meeting you guys. Um, and then after that, I uh, came to Chicago to take over Spiaggia. Um, I'm giving you a little background on my journey and my brother's journey and how they intersected. And um, while I was over in Italy, I would often write home to my mom and my dad, to my brother Joe, my sisters, and to my best friend Matt Smith. And I would tell them these stories about, you know, one day my brother and I are going to do something together. I'm going to be in the kitchen and he's going to be in the front of the house. And of course, when you're young, your, your aspirations are small a restaurant. Joe's going to run the front and Paul's going to run the back. Um, wow, things have changed. So, so when I was in Chicago at Spiaggia, my brother called me one day and he said, listen, I'm telling you, there's a market for, you know, what we do here up in Milwaukee. And I was kind of like, Joe, you know, if there was really a market, I, I mean, I don't know, you know, you really think so. He's like, I'm telling you, there's a market up here. So I come up here one day and we find this uh, restaurant in Wauwatosa. And uh, my brother immediately like, this is where we're going to do our first or our restaurant, the restaurant. And of course, we were young and terrified and we stick our toe in the water with a, you know, $150,000 investment and some friends and family money. And we start our company thinking that it was going to be a restaurant. And I would always drive up from the Illinois border. And when I hit the border, I would also immediately become Paul Bartolotta. And it was just so almost unnatural to me, so bear with me because Bartolot has been with me for the last 40 something years. No disrespect. And by the way, the Bartolotta restaurants rolls off my tongue super easy. As you can see, right? But when I put my hand out, it's Bartolotta. I just can't do anything about it. So, so we started this company and, and I would be writing these letters to my brother and then f fast forward, we open up the first restaurant and my brother immediately called me up and he said, you know, th you know thanks for helping get this thing started. He said, but you know what? I, I, this is a job. I said, I mean, I can't take a day off. And he said, it's like, it's 50 seats. I mean, I, we're, you know, we're making decent money, but it's not real money. And he's like, what are we gonna do? And I said, well, let's do another restaurant. So he looked around and again, to my brother's credit, God love him, he had a gift, a gift to be able to find amazing locations. So then he found Lake Park Bistro. And of course, not an uncomplicated situation, county property, private and public enterprise marrying together. And because my brother has the will and also the ability to be flexible and adaptable and amenable to relationships, and relationships were so important, he was able to create a unique private-public uh, relationship with them. And so the original idea was, oh, let's do another town restaurant. And having worked in France, I said, you know what, let's do French. And of course, two brothers, he's like, but we're Italian. And I'm like, yeah, but I worked in France and do we really only want to do Italian? And he looked at him and says, no, and you know what? We don't want to build a restaurant, we want to build a company. And I don't want to build myself a job, I want to build a company. And it was that vision at that moment that was the genesis in, you know, and Lake Park Bistro now will be 25 next year, so, you know, due for a, a refresh. 
And so we started our company that way, and it's basically two brothers where our basic goals were, he said, you go live your dream because you like the big cities in New York and Chicago and Vegas. I had a restaurant in Vegas with Steve Wynn for 11 years. And I think um, we both complimented each other because we were completely different people. Like, uh, I can, uh, I can, can agree with that. that. Yeah. He, he, was, he was the ref. And, and so totally different people. But we would often joke about it and say, listen, olive oil and vinegar, great vinaigrette. And, and so it's a restaurant thing, you know, <laughs> chef thing. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that's how we worked. And Joe was the principal in the business. Um, which made our decision-making process very easy. I was the brother who was out sort of in the world, you know, with a European background and big corporations in New York. And, you know, I was with Levy Restaurants for 10 years when we started our company. Big corporate background. And we were two little brothers starting a little business. So my input was on the culinary side and on trying to like take what I was learning in my personal education in these big companies and bring it to our company without diluting the culture or becoming a corporate enterprise because we've always felt that the idea of a corporation as a, as a mindset was never going to be healthy because we are not a corporation. We're really not even a business. What we are about two people that got together early on and we said to ourselves, Let's build our core values at some point. Let's define what's important to us. And, and those became very, very obvious. First, we take care of our people and we take care of each other. And if we're caretakers, and that is how our DNA is wired from our parents and our upbringing, ultimately, that just transitioned very naturally to what Joe called the hospitality heart that we need to have to show and care for our, our, our employees. And we believe that if we really cared for our employees, then they would then care for our customers. And that was the empowerment of our realizing we couldn't do it all ourselves. We never could, we never will. And that's why I believe very strongly that my brother's legacy will live, live on long, long beyond his years because it isn't a single individual, it's the collective of our team and our values. Two, take care of our guests. Three, have relationships and have respect for your vendors because they will provide you, and we deal with a perishable like food, they will provide you with the best product because they're as prideful to sell to us and we're not always negotiating them. Well, we could do a little bit better job, but, but, but we're not always grinding them down. We start with what's the best, and then what's the best price you can do for me, but we don't begin with what's the cheapest. We never have. Uh, and then lastly, obviously, if you are taking care of that, then the community becomes a really important part of who we are because we believe very strongly that if you're part of a, your community, if you invest in your community, you make the community better. And by the way, there are a blizzard of restaurants that are out there that are, are you know, people that grew up within our, that then entrepreneurially had it in them to go do their own restaurants and now they're competitors which is okay, because at the end of the day, it challenges us to be better, and it's very, it gives us an enormous sense of pride to see all the people when we walk into any restaurant, and we just see so many people that have come through our doors over the years, and how many marriages have come through our company. Um, between us, um, as I said, the decision-making as a business was pretty simple, because I, as first a brother, no filter. Honesty and integrity is 100% how it goes. And so whenever we'd have a conversation about what we should do, my brother always knew 100% he would get. And we all know that the best people that we surround us with, if you're the person signing their, their paycheck, there may be a little bit of a 90% of a or a 95%, but there's going to be a point where they're not going to say certain things because you sign their check. And in my case with my brother, it was unfiltered. And then he would sometimes not always love it, and then he'd walk away and he'd muddle it over, and sometimes he'd say, nope, I'm gonna go do this. And I'd be like, then I'm behind you 100%. Other times he'd go, you know, what if we did this? Or other times it would be simple, he'd come back and say, I thought about it. I hate to admit it, you're probably right about this one. So as, as, as a couple of brothers, we also had, our family values were very much a part of who we were, and so uh, this is about succession planning and such. As such. You know, my brother always uh, asked me, he, he had, you know, ill 
health issues early on. So early on is when we started our second, even our third restaurant. He said, listen, I'm not going to be around forever, so I need you to stay. I want you to go do your thing and bring back whatever you can. Help supply me with chefs, which I was sort of the conduit for our chefs and overseeing our food programs, uh, a little bit more behind the scenes. Um, but at the end of the day, he said, you know, I'm not going to be around forever. I need you to be involved enough so that you were aware of what would happen one day because I won't be here forever. And he had some ill health. And he, he asked me, he said, listen, just take care of my girls. That's all I really want you to do. One of them is here. I got your back. And, and so, um, ah. um, so, so that has been my, uh, my commitment to my brother. And likewise, if anything would have happened to me, I know without a doubt, like he takes care of everyone he ever met, he would have taken care of my two girls, uh, my wife and daughter. And so my, my, our, we are a family-run business, so we have members of our family that are intimately involved. Um, my sister Marie has been with our, our company when she moved back from New York uh, as the director of uh, catering and also the director of sales, uh, gen general manager. Uh, so she wears two hats in one job. Um, my, my brother's daughter, Mary, uh, is, an, is an assistant uh, marketing manager, and her and her sister, Anna, have expressed an entrepreneurial spirit and desire to be in our business. Uh, I told them we're going to make that happen, but that is TBE, as in to be earned. Do you hear me? <laughs> I love you. Uh, and so I've already begun, and we, this is something we had talked about with Joe, you know, a plan to make sure um, Anna currently is very active in an excellent restaurant group in Columbus, Ohio, where she's like the director of new restaurants and training and developing them. And, and Mary has worked in many of our restaurants, starting out as a hostess and working in the pastry shop and various positions throughout the company, um, coat check when, in the winter, making a little cash on the side. So all good things. Um, and then, of course, Jennifer, uh, my brother's uh, um, uh, wife, uh, obviously is a force of nature for good in the community and all of her community involvement and all that she does to make this city better. Uh, and that will, of course, uh, continue in perpetuity because she is so committed to doing good and seeing our, our city continue to evolve. I just, I don't know where you get the energy, indefatigable. Um, and, uh, and then the other thing that my brother and I learned is we sort of define people into three fundamental buckets, originators, implementers, and executors. And we spend a lot of time looking at sort of the, we use Gallup uh, as well, to help define what people are so that we make sure that we take a ballet dancer and don't ask them to do tap. And we understand that we play to their strengths and don't expect people to work on their weaknesses to become better. We don't put them in a position where they're not going to succeed. We put them in a position where they play with what they're passionate about. And so we, we, we had this uh, long discussion about where we were going to go um, with some of our development of our team. But we also understood who we were. And my brother was this jet ski. And he would see that shiny spoon, somebody said shiny spoon, and we all chuckled earlier, um, and he would like take off, and he, because he was such a visionary, and sort of the rest of us a little bit in the wake here, a little bit, but that was his genius, and that it was our job to make sure, his job, to, to make sure that we had the support organization of people that had that other skill set that we didn't possess. Hence, we brought on Keith Trafton, who has been a godsend to our organization. He has assisted us on anything from personal levels to, to just pretty much everything. What, um, what's the Italian word for it? Um, con, con, consigliere. consigliere. Um, right. He's the Tom Fagan of the situation. Uh, I, I survive in all the movies, so that, and, that's a chemical And part. honestly, um, you know, we wouldn't be the company we are also without our managing partners. Um, he is one of them. John Wise, our director of operations, has been with us since almost the very beginning. Adam Siegel, um, uh, one of my protégés that I brought up here early on that you probably all know, uh, James Beard Award winner as well, amazing chef, fabulous guy. You know, these are so much a part of how we got to where we are. And we talk often, Joe and I would talk often, like we're not really building it for us. We're building this company for the future. We never looked at it in the short term. We've always had the long haul view. So what we build today, we 
are really going to build for the future. So when you th look at the three buckets, originator, implementer, and executor, my brother was way on the originator side, knew how to execute, wasn't his passion, found great people to do that. I assisted a little bit on the origination. I think I had a little something to do with what we do. Um, but that was really my brother's ballywick. Me, on the other hand, I was more on the executor side, more in behind the scenes, more in the grind of it on the day to day, more kind of what really happens in the units. And we needed to surround ourselves by people like this that helped get it done day to day. And so we are so fortunate to have somebody like Keith. So you're up. So I'm going to make it brief. I, I respect uh, we've got a lot of stuff covered. So just a couple of things that and we might handle in some of the open Q&A. As I think about the opportunity that, that Joe and Paul and Jennifer provided me, and I've had been fortunate to be in other organizations, the, the question is, when do you start that succession planning? We've unfortunately been splashing our face real recently, but as, as business owners and, and operators, every day you make risk-based decisions. You know, the big ones, should I go into business? That's a profound one where you really muddle over it and you angst and you finally say, yeah, it's worth the risk. And then are those middle ones. Should I go after a new customer? Should I invest in equipment? Should I open a new restaurant? Has a little less risk. There might be some incidental ones. Should I tell my wife I'm not coming home on time, right? So the risk profile is all out there. So every day you make these decisions and risks, and then you ask yourself, when should I do that to succession planning? Well, the reality is one of four things are going to happen to you as business owners. You're either going to quit, go off to Barbados and call it a day. You're going to sell the company. You're going to retire, or you're going to pass away. So for me, the risk, it's a risk-free decision. The question is, when do you want to start the succession planning? In my opinion, as the, as the person who helps the family, do you care about your family? Well, if that answer is yes, you, you might want to start today. Do you care about your employees? Do you care about you know, what you've brought to the community? Do you honestly just care about what you've done as a person? If any of those are yes, the answer is you start today. So we're blessed to challenge ourselves on formal succession planning. We had a burning platform uh, Joe had a, a kidney uh, transplant, so that was like the, pardon my French, oh shit moment, we better get stuff together. And thank goodness, because that was back in 2013, many years later, it's, it's helped us in some regards. And that succession planning doesn't have to be from a traumatic event like we're experiencing, it, it's about how to get ready, the Aaron's family, how do you move forward, how do you get ready. So. I've been with, with family businesses, and it's always like, yeah, you know, I've, I created this thing, I'm never going to die. Well, you're, you're, you're going to, or you're going to sell the company. So the time is now. That's my, my plea with you. And, and I want to lean a little bit on what, what Dan had mentioned earlier. If you look at his core values, and it's consistent with ours, is just being a good person. It, it sounds fundamental. It sounds rude. Paul and I were given a big gift yesterday. It was a gift of time. And we, we met with... Uh, one of our partners in the community, we, you would call a landlord, we call a partner in the community, uh, Roy Ryman. If you've ever met the guy, you're, you're, better, you're a better person for meeting. So we spend an hour, and if you ever schedule an appointment with Roy and he says a half hour, schedule an hour and a half, because he's a storyteller. He's done magazines and stuff like that. And we shared a lot of laughs. We, we shared some, you know, some moments about Joe and stuff like that. And, it, it was fantastic. And then he said, thank you for, for being here, and, and thank you for being part of Greendale. And Paul said, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. And he was telling at the end a story about a relationship he had with a particular uh, uh, person, one of the subscribers some years ago. And I was like, wow, that's really neat. You didn't have to do that. And he goes, Keith, you don't get it. Character is built day after day after day after day after day. And you build that, that up over time. It takes one bad decision and poof, it's gone forever. So when you think about for your own businesses and your own families, how do I succession plan, whether it's with the family members that you're doing it with, whether it's you know, maybe the third party, the, the, the business associates you're with, be good. Think about what the, the end game is. Because at the end, it's all about, it's all about goodness. And, and we are so fortunate to be a part the last couple of months of 
the love that each of you have shown our organization. It, at that day, it's because it was a good guy, right? And if you're a good guy or a good woman or a good person, it all works out. The money will come, the success will come, the relationship will come, just being good. I know it sounds hokey, but we've, it's been yeah, demonstrated it, it, the last that, month and a half. That, it's that classic you know, statement that you know, it isn't that you have integrity 99% of the time. It's that one last 1% that's the hard one. And you always know when you're challenged with a decision between right and wrong. And you have to listen. My dad used to say, we all have like a little bird on our shoulder that is our conscience. And it tells you. Uh, and it protects you when you're riding your bike and a car is coming. But it's something that always is chirping in your ear. And if you, at some point in your life, you stop listening to that conscience, that sense of right and wrong that you know in the bottom of your stomach, then you don't ultimately live with a certain level of values and and when Roy was like thanking us and I was just I, I got literally choked up I was like I mean you know how much have you done to help us are you kidding me you're thanking us yeah. you've given us this platform this opportunity yeah. to have this great business in, in green it's like so <laughs> it was crazy you know what the birds chirping on your shoulder he's saying we've talked too much so thank you very much Sorry everybody